Hello, welcome to the video. I'm going to show you how to use a Siemens PLC to control a Festo servo drive and Festo servo motor to do point to point motion. And there's our point to point move. Let me show you how to do it now. First, I'll show you the hardware setup and how to download the necessary software from Festo.com. Then we'll configure the servo drive in Festo Automation Suite. And we're going to get into TI Portal and show you how to set up the project so you can integrate that point to point function block. And finally, I'll show you some tips using watch tables. Let's take a look at the hardware setup. On the left, you see my Siemens S7-1200 PLC. In the middle, you see my Festo server drive. And on the right, you see my Festo server motor. Now, the PLC is connected to a network switch on the bottom Ethernet connection, as well as my Festo server drive connected to the same Ethernet switch on the front X18 port and the top X19 port. I also have a power supply for the Festo server drive, which gives me 24-volt logic power on the top which is wired up to my STO for the servo drive. On the front of the servo drive, you see where my motor connections for supply power, brake, and encoder feedback signal. To start, we're gonna to wanna to download everything from the Festo website. So open up your browser and type in festo.com. Then we're going to put in our drive part number, which is on the side of the drive and hit show details. From here, we can go to the downloads page and you'll see we're in the user documentation documentation section. There's some installation manuals, software manuals, which will help you wire up the drive and find any errors uh, in the software. Then we're gonna go to the software tab and you wanna make sure you download Festo Automation Suite to parameterize the drive, it's our program for that. You also wanna get the plugin, the second one there, that helps you work with the drive inside Festo Automation Suite and then last but not least, the firmware package there will be useful. Then you want to go in the filter and type Siemens. That way you can find all of our software and app notes for Siemens. So there's the function block library, which we can go ahead and download. Some of the function blocks that you can see here are point to point movements, extended process data, which lets you pass force and other process data to the PLC. Uh, we have a homing function block, but today we're going to focus on point to point movements. So go ahead in your downloads and extract the zip folder. And then we'll talk about what's inside the zip folder. So you go to support portal and then there are four different sections. There's the documentation section, which has the application note, which will be very useful to reference. There's the example section, which has TIA portal projects for version 20, 19, version 18, which you can see there. We do have an archive section with older versions as well. Inside version 20, you'll see different files. If you go to additional files, there's the GSD, which are general station device files. And we will load that into TIA portal later. Just wanted to make you aware of that. This is the FAS sample project, and it has example parameters of a drive that you can reference if you'd like to. Right here's the library for TIA portal, which has all the function blocks. So not just the point to point, but every single function block. From here, we're going to go into Festo Automation Suite. It's worth noting, I'm going to breeze through the Festo Automation Suite setup so we can get into TIA portal. And before we open up a new project, we're going to install device plugins, and this will allow us to update all of our software. So plugins, CMMT AS plugin, if you need to, you could install or update it from here. You want to go to extensions and scan. This allows you to scan for all the Festo devices. And if you need to update firmware, here's a good place to download and install that. Last but not least, we can go to about. And here are the release notes for the updated version of Festo Automation Suite. If you needed to update that, you could. Now we're going to go into a new project. We're going to go to this eyeglass for the scan. And here are the X18 and the X19 ports. So the X18 port is for setting parameters for the drive. And the X19 port is for field bus communications protocol. On the right, you can see device details. So there's the name, the firmware version, the IP address, some good details there. Another thing is you can look at the firmware here if you needed to update it. And I actually like using this network settings folder. You can change the IP address if you need to. Support, there's application notes, video tutorials, all helpful if you need 
to learn more about Fest Automation Suite. We're going to hit Add a Project and go ahead and drop it in. Now it's initializing the plugin into the project. Device is imported, so you can hit OK. You can go to the home screen, which will show the topology editor. You can move your drive around or expand it for visibility. We'll go ahead and double click into the plugin. Now from here, we're going to have to start our drive from the first setup. If you want, you can use manual setup if you feel comfortable with that and you're more advanced. So starting first setup, we have to define our motor, axis, and mounting kit. So for me, I found the motor part number. Just double click that plus the blue plus sign, type in your motor, select, hit apply. You can go to axis, so hit that blue plus sign again. For me, I'm just gonna use user defined rotative axis, and I'm gonna make sure that it's unlimited for the purposes of this video. Mounting kit, I'm also going to go in and select user defined mounting kit. Once that's loading, you'll be able to hit the next button in the bottom right. Activation, I'm gonna set it to field plus, mains voltage 120, since I'm using wall power. Next, here you can see some different uh, field bus protocols. Set your application data, such as the mass. If you had hardware switches, you could put in some hardware switches there. Configure those. Here's the homing method section. We have lots of different homing methods that you can select from. Here's the software elements page, which you can active, activate or deactivate. This can be activated or deactivated in TIA portal as well. Now there are a couple more things we need to set up to get the drive going. But before we do that, we'll go ahead and connect and write these parameters to the drive. We'll store it on the device. We'll reinitialize the device. And then we'll acknowledge the errors. All right, we're gonna go to, on the left side of the screen, you can drop down field bus, select Profinet. And this is the IP address for the X19 communications port or field bus port. This is actually configured in TIA portal, but I just wanted to show you it was here. So now you're going to drop down profiles, profi drive, and I want to show you factor group. So position is set to negative six and velocity is set to negative three. This sets your units for TIA portal by moving the decimal six places and three places so that you get more resolution on your position and velocity. Now we're going to go to telegram and we will set it to telegram 111. This feeds the proper array of data to the PLC so that we can do the point to point function block. The next thing to take note of on the screen is the base value velocity down here. We are going to take this value and copy and paste it into TIA portal later for the point of scaling the velocity correctly. All right, we can minimize this and open up TIA portal. I'm using version 20 and we're going to set up the PLC. Create new project. I'm going to call mine Festo point to point drives Profinet PN. I like going to this project view and setting up my PLC there. Top left, you can hit add new device. Then you will need to select your PLC. So I have a S71200 and it's this specific part number. Okay, now it's asking me about PLC security settings. For the point of this demonstration, I'm just gonna turn off all security features, but you're welcome to set it up how you like. All right, double click your ethernet port and we're gonna go ahead and set our IP address. If you forget what it is, you can go to online access, go to whatever your network switch is, hit update accessible devices. And there's my PLC and my server drive right there. All right, double click the ethernet port, change IP address. The other thing is you wanna make sure you assign your Profinet name and that's just something that you have to do or you won't be able to communicate properly. So you can set it there, but you can also go to online diagnostics, functions, assign Profinet device name, update list. It's gonna scan and find it, and then if you need to change the name or find your device, and then you can assign it there. Now my PLC is set up, but I don't have my server drive in my network. So I'm gonna to go to options, manage general station description files. And here I already have them installed for the Festo products, but in case you're not 
you don't have them pre-installed like I do, you can go back to your zip file, go to example. If you go to whichever version you have, and then you're gonna to wanna to go to this additional file section, and there's the GSD folder right there. And it's gonna have all the um, files for the FESO servo drives. You can install them. All right, so they're in other field devices, Profinet IO, drives, Festo CMMT AS, and that's my model. So I'm gonna click and drag, and I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag as well the ethernet ports so that they're connected and assigned. Now I need to set my IP address and assign my Profinet device name for my server drive. So there's my IP address. My name's already assigned, my Profinet device name is assigned, but if you need to, you can hit to right click, assign device name, update list. It will scan the different devices for their MAC address, and you can assign there. Okay, now we want to set up our telegram for the servo drive. So right now you'll see that there's standard telegram one in this section, which is good for setting up speed or other simple parameters, but we need to delete that so we can use standard telegram 111. And there's a host of various telegrams that you can select from depending on what function blocks you're using. Like I said, standard telegram 111 is gonna be good for us here for the point to point function block. Now, I think it's a good time to go ahead and compile and download just to make sure everything's um, all green. It's a good time before you send any other function blocks up. Of course, I'm overriding what was previously there. We're gonna go online and get some green dots. Okay, so everything's looking good so far. You can also start or run the PC, which is the PLC. It's gonna everything's looking good, so I'll go offline. Now to the fun part, let's go to program blocks, go to the main, and we're gonna drop in our point-to-point -point function block. So to do that, you're gonna to look to the right on the libraries. And I don't have my Festo function block library in there yet, so I'm gonna hit open global library, and you wanna to navigate to wherever the library is stored which is in that zip folder. Like I said earlier, you can go to the master copies and there's function blocks, several different function block options there, but we're gonna use the point to point, drag and drop. So I wanna go ahead and pull up the app note, just so you can see here's the function block in the app note. Here are the different mode positions that you can use. And I'll go into detail into each of those later. Next, I wanted to take you to the inputs and outputs section. So at the very top here, these are all the inputs to the function block. Here are all the outputs to the function block. Now these three parameters are not set up yet and we need to set them up. Otherwise the function block won't work correctly. So let's do that now. The first one is config epause and I'm gonna set it up with 0000, zero, zero, zero underscore zero, 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 0003. And that's going to allow me to run the function block with no software limits and no hardware limits on the servo controller. You will have to look at the app note and see what bits you want high and what bits you want low and set that. The next one is base speed value. And this is directly output from Fast Automation Suite. You can go to the parameter list, base value velocity, and copy that value and paste that right into the function block. That allows the velocity to scale properly. And then last but not least, the hardware ID, you're gonna to wanna to select that Telegram 111. Now with those three things set, we're going to compile, download, and go online. Now that we're online, we're gonna to go to the data block so we can monitor our values and change them. So I'll hit the monitor all. You can see the config epause, base speed value, and hardware ID are set like we have them. And I'll just demo the mode pause seven, which is a simple jog. 
Now you'll see I also have to make sure that my parameters are set correctly. For example, I'm going to make release break true so that my hold break is off. I'm going to enable access. From here, I'm going to use the inputs jog1 and jog2 to move the axis and jog it. So you can see I pull up Festo Automation Suite, and I'm jogging at 36 RPMs right there. Now I'm going to use jog2, which just moves the same, same speed in a different direction. So positive and negative don't affect mode pause 7. So I suggest looking through the app note to see which inputs work with which mode pauses. Even if I make position zero and velocity zero, I can still jog with jog one and jog two. Okay, let's change the mode pause to mode pause one, which is a manual data input for incremental position or relative positioning. So I'm gonna go 20 revolutions and I have a factor group of six, so I gotta add on six zeros there. 500 RPMs with a factor group of three, so I'm gonna add on three zeros there. I'm still not moving until I change execute mode from false to true. I need that rising edge to trigger this move. So I'm going to trigger true. Now you see my speed and position are changing. I'll do it one more time. Velocity changes. There you go. Let's go to mode pause two. This is for absolute position moves. So I'll make position zero. Notice I'm still not moving until I trigger execute mode. Now the drive is moving backwards to zero position at that speed that I've set of 500 RPMs. The next thing I want to show you is using a watch table. This watch table, you can add new watch table. And what's nice about this is you can grab your tags from the data block, shift click and pull them in all your inputs and outputs. You can monitor them all. But then what I like is you can right click, insert a comment line, and you can put whatever you like. Inputs, outputs. You can make a section for mode pause one, mode pause two. You can add and delete tags. So you can format this however you like it. And here I'm just gonna demo it with mode pause seven, which is that jog that we did from earlier. One for true, for the jog one. And I don't need execute mode, so I'll turn it to false. And again, you have to modify the values. And then here you go. I'm jogging again. The other thing I like about it is you can change the display format from hex to binary. So if you need to see what bits are on and what bits are off, I like using binary for that. You can do that for um, status words. You can do it for error codes. Whatever you need binary for, that's helpful. This concludes our video on controlling a Siemens PLC using a Festo servo drive and servo motor to do point-to-point -point motion. Thank you for watching and please feel free to give us feedback in the comments.